Do you believe in the power of prayer? Keith Allison does. All of a sudden there was a lump there. Keith had stage four lymphoma and doctors gave him five years to live. That was 13 years ago. I don't know, but I said something just happened. Keith received a miracle and so can you. I can't believe that a miracle would happen to me, but I said, I, I think it did. Welcome to this edition of the 700 Club. I know many of you share my mourning at the loss of my good friend Dave Wilkerson, founder of Teen Challenge. Apparently there was a tragic car crash. I haven't got all the details yet as to what happened, but apparently he was hit on the Texas highway, East Texas, by a big 18-wheeler. Uh, uh, and yeah. uh, beyond that, I don't know. Terry. 79 years old, the pastor, of course, of uh, Times Square Church in New York. Many of you probably enjoyed his his newsletters as I did. He was killed. His wife, Gwen, was badly injured. It was a head-on collision yesterday in East Texas. And today, Christians remember the powerful legacy of his ministry. Heather Sells has more. David Wilkerson inspired Christians around the world with his passion for saving lost souls. In 1958, he felt God calling him to New York City to minister to gang members and drug addicts. He tells of his encounter with notorious gang leader Nikki Cruz in the best-selling book The Cross and the Switchblade. It later became a movie starring Pat Boone. You could cut me up into a thousand pieces and lay them in the street. And every piece will still love you. It did damage good in my brain. And in my heart, I began to question. And for two weeks, I could not sleep thinking about love. Wilkerson went on to found Teen Challenge, a biblically-based recovery program for drug addicts. In 1987, he returned to Manhattan to found the non-denominational Times Square Church. In the aftermath of 9-11, Wilkerson's leadership was elevated as he called the city to repentance. If you're a praying Bible believer, you know instinctively in your heart that God is trying to speak to this nation and the world through this. Oh God, forgive our sins against you. Forgive our sins against you. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Wilkerson's heart for revival was a hallmark. In one of his most stirring sermons, he preached about anguish for the unsaved. We've held on to our religious rhetoric and our revival talk, but we've become so passive. All true passion is born out of anguish. All true passion for Christ comes out of a baptism of anguish. I think Brother Dave was really at war with the status quo. He, uh, he could not tolerate religiosity, so it's kind of a funny thing that God called him to pastor. Uh, but his many words that he spoke of warning about zeal for the Lord and holiness and anguish and faithfulness, uh, they were a voice that were calling the body of Christ. I literally think he was speaking for the Lord as what we would say a modern day prophet. Wilkerson's death leaves a rich legacy, but his ministry and vision will also be dearly missed. In this last devotional blog, he wrote this, to those going through the valley and shadow of death, hear this word. Weeping will last through some dark, awful nights, and in that darkness you will soon hear the Father whisper, I am with you. I cannot tell you why right now, but one day it will all make sense. You will see it was all part of my plan. It was no accident. It was no failure on your part. Hold fast. Let me embrace you in your hour of pain. Beloved, God has never failed to act but in goodness and love. Heather Sell, CBN News. Thanks, Heather. Very interesting. Now, you and, and David Wilkerson yeah. were in New York well, at the same time, were you not? I was uh, there in Clawson Avenue Presbyterian Church as I was just getting to the calling of the Lord to start this ministry. And <clears throat> he was just starting Teen Challenge, but he was in a place called Clifton Avenue, and we were in Clawson. We were saw him there in those early days. Um, he was the skinny preacher from down in Pennsylvania who came up to, to go after the gangs. and. Uh, my friend Harold Bradison uh, talked John Sherrill into getting to know him, and they wrote a book uh, together called The Cross and the Switchblade. It became a huge bestseller. Huge bestseller. And um, subsequent to that, but Dave's had a real prophetic gift. I, I've been with him. I was there 
forward in 73. If I'd followed his advice, we wouldn't have CBN because it was kind of like terrible days are coming and don't do anything. <laughs> you know? yeah. So it was, it was uh, prophetic, but it was also a lot of gloom and doom. So, yeah. But we'll miss him. He, he was a tremendous man and Teen Challenge is a towering uh, institution to help the lost and it, it was it was a story in the in the life of the church that uh, you know we'll never forget. Well, he was a voice <clears throat> loudly crying to we, the rest of we us. We don't to know stay what strong. happened. I, I haven't gotten the news yet. Apparently, yeah. he pulled out. He was into the ongoing lane of traffic yeah. and got hit by this gigantic truck. Whether he had you know gone to sleep at the wheel or whether he pulled out to avoid some other uh, wreck on the highway, I don't have all this, the, the I don't things. Know. About and his wife is is quite yeah. seriously injured, we so we need to be for praying her. for her. Yes. Well, I tell you, the, the the great saints of God are going down one after the other. John Gemini is here, and Oral Roberts, and Harold Bradison, and D. James Kennedy, and uh, Bill Bright, Bill and Bright, yeah. one right after the other, dear friends of mine, and and uh, uh, we'll miss them. Mm -hmm. So. Our uh, our homage to a dear friend, Dave Wilkerson. He is home with Jesus right now. And uh, as Dick White called me last night, and he said he's with Jesus, and you know, that's that's all we can think. Dave Wilkerson mm -hmm. is with Jesus and is rejoicing in heaven. And the Father will say, "Well done, good and faithful servant." Well, Lee Webb has the rest of our top stories from the CBN newsroom. Lee. Man, close to 200 people have been killed by a wave of tornadoes and severe storms that started Wednesday and ran through the night. The deadly twisters took their worst toll in five southern states. At least 128 people were killed in Alabama alone. Many died when a massive tornado devastated the town of Tuscaloosa. We were standing uh, up on the street and I looked up and I saw debris in the air and I told my wife, we got to get inside and boom. And then moments later it was over. President Obama has declared a state of emergency in Alabama. More than 140 tornadoes were reported from Mississippi to Maryland. The Red Cross has activated half of its national chapters in response to the unprecedented storm, and Alabama's Governor Pat has activated almost 1,500 Alabama National Guardsmen. Well, where we are within a couple of hours is another bad storm on the way. Uh, just a week or so ago, we had the worst spate of tornadoes that I can remember since I've lived here. Something like a hundred in North Carolina and Virginia. They just, it was unbelievable. And <clears throat> I saw one of the experts on the Weather Channel saying that uh, April may set a record for tornadoes as one of the, as the most active months maybe in history. It, it seems like, I, I don't think I'm imagining this, every day there's a tornado mm. somewhere when we turn on the news. It's well, unbelievable. The weather's violent and people are saying, well, is it global warming? Is it something else? I mean, what's going on? But it, when you think of almost 200 lives lost, uh, it's heart heart rending. So again, our hearts go out to those who suffer, those who are the families of those who have lost not only their property but their loved ones. Lee, Pat, Indiana is set to become the first state to cut all government funding for Planned Parenthood. The state legislature voted 66 to 32 to strip Planned Parenthood of the three million dollars it receives from the federal government each year. The state Senate has already approved that measure, and Republican Governor Mitch Daniels now has a week to sign the bill or let it become law without his signature. If it does become law, the state could lose $4 million in federal fam family planning grants. And as we've reported uh, on this program before, Pat, it's the states where, where the pro-life effort is having its gr greatest traction. You know, it's time that they call the tune on Planned Parenthood. It is the largest provider of abortion services in America. Uh, it has a billion dollar budget, 300 plus million dollars comes from taxpayer money. Um, and there's a suit right now in California, uh, the ACLJ, the American Center for Law and Justice, is, uh, has survived a, a, a challenge to that lawsuit on a summary judgment <clears throat> that uh, they were double and triple billing the federal government for the so-called abortion services they were providing. They call this health counseling. It's a tiny fraction of what they do. And it's time that the, the, the tune get called. And there are people like Mike Pence and in the Congress who are saying, we're going to cut their funding. And there's no reason the world taxpayer money should go to that organization. None whatsoever. And uh, it's your money. 
and uh, you have a right to say what's being done. So our hats are off to the legislature of Indiana is taking a bold first step. Lee? Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke says he expects a moderate economic recovery to continue this year. Bernanke held the first news conference for a chairman in the Fed's 98-year history. A new report shows the economy is growing at a slower pace than originally forecast, but Bernanke says the Fed's main goal now is to keep inflation low. Uh, first, we are trying to maintain low and stable inflation uh, by our definition of price stability. Uh, by maintaining the purchasing value of the dollar, keeping inflation low, that's obviously good for the dollar. The second thing we're trying to accomplish is to get a stronger recovery and to achieve maximum employment. Bernanke says he expects the unemployment rate will fall at about a half a point by the end of the year. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham says the deadlock in Israeli-Palestinian negotiations is not Israel's fault. Graham is heading a bipartisan delegation to the Middle East in Jerusalem, he criticized Palestinian plans to seek unilateral recognition for an independent state, and he signaled that many in Congress will support Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu when he addresses Congress next month. I think the Prime Minister very much understands that the uh, action in the United Nations is off base. You know, Israel's not the problem. Uh, the Palestinian state needs to come about in a way that will ensure the security of Israel. And the road to Middle East peace just got bumpier. The Palestinian Authority has made a unity deal with a terrorist group Hamas. As Julie Stahl reports, that's a big problem for Israel and the U.S. The Hamas terrorist group ruling the Gaza Strip and the U.S.-backed Palestinian Authority in the West Bank have formed a national unity government. It's not the first time, but both sides are calling the deal historic. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the Palestinian Authority will have to choose between peace with Israel and peace with Hamas. Peace with both is impossible because Hamas aspires to destroy the state of Israel and says so openly. It fires missiles at our cities. It fires anti-tank rockets at our children. Netanyahu's spokesman, Mark Regev, says it's important to understand who Hamas is. Hamas is one of the most extreme Islamist uh, terrorist organizations. They say no to peace. They say no to reconciliation. Uh, they say yes to terrorism and violence. Hamas announced the new caretaker government would not recognize Israel or enter negotiations. Egypt says the unity deal intends to help Palestinians seeking recognition of an independent Palestinian state at the UN in September, something many in the U.S. Congress oppose. That's not the way that, that the decision should be arrived at of two states, and so um, uh, I think that we're very united on that reaction. This latest development could cause a dilemma for the U.S. A U.S. official told CBN News it's very sensitive since Hamas is a terrorist organization. In 2010, the U.S. gave the Palestinian Authority nearly $600 million, but is prevented by law from negotiating with Hamas. It's not clear what the Obama administration will do now that the groups have joined forces. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. Pat, back to you. Well, what people got to remember um, is that the Muslim Brotherhood set up Hamas. Hamas is a terrorist organization. It is a creature of the Muslim Brotherhood, just like the Muslim Brotherhood trained and equipped Yasser Arafat and set him in to head up Fatah. So both of these organizations really are radical in their core, so they're coming together. And uh, I don't know exactly what this, this means, except that uh, Israel is going to be uh, facing a united front. But uh, the, a unilateral declaration of a, of, a, of a state is not going to succeed. Israel is not going to recognize it, and so they'll still be having clashes, and there'll still be war. Terry? Well, this year's revolution in Egypt ousted its dictator, but freedom for one group has remained very elusive. In terms of the actual number of attacks on cops, they have increased since Mubarak stepped down. And that has a lot of uh, cops worried. Is this a harbinger of the future? 
Hear why some of these Coptics are leaving the country and why others are staying when we return. Got a question for Pat? Send us yours now on CBN.com. We'll bring it online with your questions from our live chat room later on today's 700 Club. Here we go. Get ready, because now the more fun you have, the more fit you can get. Introducing the Curved Circuit with Zumba Fitness. It's the only class that mixes the music and moves of Zumba with the proven strength training of Curves for one wildly effective 30-minute workout. Dance on in for a free week. Burn up to 500 calories in 30 minutes and shimmy as you sculpt. Call now to reserve your place in a class that will fill up fast. The Curved Circuit with Zumba Fitness. It's the wildly effective workout that's only at Curves. Tomorrow, we've been all taught in America that the pilgrims came to America for religious freedom, but that's really a shallow understanding of why they came. Hear the real story of America's first settlers. They were missionaries. They weren't running away from anything. The humble beginnings of a Christian nation. Almighty God, by your great mercy, we have reached this land. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. They've been there for 2,000 years. They were the largest group, religious group in Egypt. Egyptian Coptics belong to one of the oldest Christian communities in the world. The Apostle Mark is supposed to have established a church in the city of Alexandria just 10 years after the ascension of Jesus Christ. But now many of these Coptic Christians are considering leaving their homeland of Egypt. Gary Lane has this shocking story from Cairo. The Egyptian Revolution brought hope and opportunity to a people long oppressed by an unpopular dictator and his subordinates. Egyptian Coptics joined Muslims in the Tahrir Square protests. But so far, the freedoms they've desired remain elusive, and this minority Christian community is under siege. In terms of the actual number of attacks on Copts, they have increased since Mubarak stepped down. And that has a lot of uh, cops worried. Is this a harbinger of the future? Many Christians are now considering leaving the country. So far, 2011 has been a tragic year for Egypt's Christians. It began on New Year's Day with a horrific suicide bombing at St. Mark's Church in Alexandria. Security guard Magdi Wahib was at the church entrance when services concluded shortly after midnight. I suddenly found myself blown inside the church. I didn't lose consciousness, but I felt severe pain in my abdomen, hand, and sides. Wahib was taken to a hospital where he underwent surgery. A piece of shrapnel nearly seven inches long was removed from his abdomen, along with 30 inches of his intestines. Wahib was among nearly 100 Christians injured in the attack. 23 people were killed. The Christians here at St. Mark's Church in Alexandria certainly know that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. They'll persevere. Their church may even grow as a result of this incident. And they're determined to fight for a new future here in Egypt, one where their rights are honored and they have religious freedom. Christians say they're not treated as equals, even though they were the majority here for more than 1,000 years. Today, they are only about 13% of the population. 86% of Egyptians are Muslim. Christians rarely receive government permission to build new churches. These members of a church in Giza near Cairo told CBN News they obtained a building permit after a lengthy 10-year battle. Then, last November, security police laid siege to their partially constructed building. At least two Christians were killed, dozens were injured in the attack. Hit by a rubber bullet, taxi driver Nasir Fakri Bakit is now unemployed because he lost sight in his left eye. The policemen inside the church were insulting us and beating us as if we were criminals. They shouted Allahu Akbar as if we Christians are not people, as if we are not human 
only like animals without any rights, as if we are not Egyptians. And police and militant Muslims aren't the only ones attacking Coptics. A new wave of assaults are coming from the Egyptian army. This is a home video of a military attack against a monastery near Alexandria last January. After local police abandoned their station, the monks at St. Beshoy's built a wall at the monastery entrance to protect themselves from intruders. The army responded, sending in 100 soldiers with tanks and light artillery to destroy the wall. Six people were injured, including a monk whose spleen had to be removed because of the attack. We were very sad because we didn't know why the army attacked like this. The army is supposed to protect us, not beat us and torture us. We are innocent, we pray and try to help people. That's all we are doing. Christians say the incident here at the Bashoi Monastery is just another example of why they need protection from a new government. They say there must be changes in their new constitution that include them. But the strongest political group at this time, the Muslim Brotherhood, insists that Islamic law, Sharia, remain the basis of Egyptian law. It opposes democratic changes in the Constitution that would grant equal rights and allow Christians and Muslim women to become president. Human rights advocate Munir Bashara spends most of his spare time on Facebook, sharing democratic ideas with young people. He says many Egyptians are religious, but will not support a theocratic government similar to the one in Iran. He warns voters against being fooled by the Muslim Brotherhood. Muslim Brotherhood, they are speaking about democratic, but inside themselves, they, if they're going to get the power, it will be last democratic and going to be dictatorial again. Paul Marshall says the United Nations and the U.S. State Department are naive and overly optimistic about the Muslim Brotherhood. So they're saying, well, the younger generation in, in the Brotherhood may be much more open. I think that's true. But the 23-year-olds aren't running the Brotherhood. And Marshall says the Hamas experience in Gaza is a harbinger for Egypt's future under the Brotherhood. Hamas is the Muslim Brotherhood of the Palestinians. They won an election, and there's been no election since. And they killed off the Palestinian Authority opponents. And that's why many Coptics may leave. They fear what may come. Still, many like Father Halmanut to the Bishoy Monastery say they'll stay. The church has existed in Egypt for 2,000 years and will survive no matter what happens. We are trusting in God and we are not afraid. Jesus told us that the people against us use the hand of human beings. But we have the hand of God, the one who's covering us will save us. Gary Lane, CBN News, Cairo, Egypt. Pray for people like this. And ladies and gentlemen, open your eyes and pray that the Congress will open its eyes and the State Department will open its eyes and especially the President will open his eyes. Islam is a vicious, vicious expression of, of hatred toward minorities. It is just terrible. You go all around the world, there is persecution in country after country. There, is, there are beatings, there are beheadings, there are stonings. There are all these things happening, and, and it's like the press in America just turns a blind eye and says, oh, well, you know, it's religious. We're not going to criticize somebody's religion. Well, uh, this is a type of government. It is a, the thrust is worldwide domination under Sharia law, the establishment of the caliphate. We say it over and over again, and we just say, praise God, somebody must be listening. But in the meantime, pray for God to defend those cops in Egypt, what they suffer. They're godly, wonderful people. The fact that they wear black robes and have long beards, don't let that throw you off, because they're, they're terrific people, and they need our support. Terry? Well, coming up, a cancer patient foregoes treatment. As it turns out, he didn't need it. I said, oh, Lou, I, uh, I don't know, but I said, something just happened. And I said, I can't believe that a miracle would happen to me, but I think it did. See why this man's cancer went into spontaneous remission when we come back. Do you take fish oil? There's an omega-3 supplement that's better than regular fish oil. Staying healthy, it's not easy. I exercise regularly and eat lots of fruits and vegetables. 
I used to take a fish oil supplement too, but then I discovered something better than regular fish oil. Arctic Wonder Omega-3 Krill Oil. It's from the makers of One-A-Day, so I know I can trust it. The Omega-3s in Arctic Wonder both support heart health and are scientifically proven to be better absorbed than regular fish oil. You'd have to take six of these fish oil soft gels to get the strength of just two Arctic Wonder soft gels. The Arctic Wonder does not have an aftertaste. They go down real easy. Arctic Wonder isn't just good for your heart. It also supports healthy brain function and a healthy immune system. This is one of the products that I plan to take for the rest of my life. Arctic Wonder is from one a day and not available in stores. For a special trial offer, call or go online now. Call 1-800-409-7339. That's 1-800-409-7339. Or go online to tryarcticwonder.com now. When you look in the mirror, can you imagine erasing years of aging? That's what I used to look like. Lifestyle Lift takes only about an hour. See the difference immediately. I'm Linda. I'm 70 years old. Can you believe it? Call now for a free information kit. It's quick, affordable, and takes only about an hour. Lifestyle Lift, a breakthrough medical procedure that helps remove wrinkles, frown lines, and sagging skin. Call now for a free information kit. Consultations are free. Call Lifestyle Lift today. To see this week's most viewed stories, go to CBN.com. All throughout this week, the staff here at CBN and Regent University are gathering together to pray for you, our partners. We call it our week of prayer. And yesterday, our featured speaker was Senate Chaplain Barry Black. All this week, we are gathering together, and we have prayer partners all over the world who are sending requests in, and we are praying for these requests. Let's lift them up before the Lord. Father, we lift these prayers before you. There's not a single one that you have not heard, Lord. Not a single one, Father, that you cannot attend to at this moment. And we ask, Lord God, that you respond to the needs that are lifted up here before you, Father. That you respond and you touch and you heal. Come and be their God, Lord. Bring healing and wholeness to these needs. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes. We are healed. We are healed by the stripes of Jesus. We are healed by the wounds of Jesus. We serve a winner. Each of the days that we are out there is such an inspiration and we're pleased to be able to bring some of that right to you and to have you know that your prayer requests, we have received more than 95,000 prayer requests now, Pat, and they're all being lifted up daily mm -hmm. to the Lord. So we thank you for that. There are only two days left in our week of prayer, but we want you to know there's still plenty of time for you to call in your prayer requests. All you have to do is dial our toll-free number, one 800 750 You can also submit them by logging on to CBN.com. We'll be praying for you in just a minute. But first, while Christians around the world celebrate Easter, Keith Allison and his wife also celebrate the week after. That's because on the Friday after Easter in 1999, Keith received an answer to one of his biggest prayers. Dr. Keith Allison, an ophthalmologist, and his wife Lou were looking forward to retirement. But one evening, Keith noticed a lump on his neck. I, I just, I went like that, and all of a sudden there was a lump there. And I thought, oh, well, now this is, it wasn't there when I shaved this morning, and, and it was perhaps the size of a golf ball. His doctor immediately ordered biopsies on the lymph nodes in his neck and in his bone marrow. Two medical labs, including the Mayo Clinic, revealed he had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma stage four in both places. Doctors gave him five years to live. He started calling the 700 Club for prayer. You just want to talk to somebody, see, and they're there, they listen, and uh, always close with the greatest prayer, you know, uh, what a comfort. As a doctor, Keith knew that older patients respond less well to chemotherapy and radiation than younger patients, so he decided to forego treatment. 
just five months after the diagnosis, Keith and Lou were at a hotel in Texas and turned on the 700 Club. As I remember, Pat said that there's somebody, some man or somebody out there that's struggling or has issues with, with cancer. In the name of Jesus, we come against this cancer and we rebuke it and bind it and cast it forth from his body in the name of Jesus. You know, that's what happened. Um, anyhow, um, the heat just radiates out of your body, and uh, that's what happened. I told my wife later, I said, uh, Lou, I, uh, I don't know, but I said, something just happened, and I said, I, I know me, and I said, I, I, I can't believe that a miracle would happen to me, but I said, I, I think it did. Keith returned to the doctor for tests, and there was no sign of cancer. The doctor told him he was in spontaneous remission. That's fine. I mean, that worked for him, and, and I, I know what worked for me. And to this day, I have no doubts. I just have great wonderment as to why uh, uh, a sinner like me would be so blessed. It's been 13 years since Keith was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Today, he and Lou are enjoying retirement and traveling around the country. When asked how he feels now, Keith says, Fantastic. <laughs> I, I, I start every day with an attitude of gratitude. Attitude of gratitude, folks. Today's a day of praising the Lord. This can be the day for you. I just want you to get your expectation up and not say, well, maybe, maybe down, 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 down. I'm not what now. Now is the day of salvation. Now, we've got some reports. Terry, we've had some this answers to prayer. This is amazing. This is Dalen, who lives in Sharon Hills, Pennsylvania. Uh, Dalen was diagnosed with COPD, which has caused difficulty in breathing. Yesterday, Pat, he heard you give a word of knowledge about somebody with lesions on the lungs. Yes. Dalen put his hand on his chest. He claimed that word of knowledge. Instantly, he felt something go through his lungs. He said he is breathing normally. Instantly, something Instantly. went through his... Yeah. God is here. God is here. He hears your prayers. And we're surrounded now as 95, would you say 95? 95, that 95, more than 95,000, 95, right. Mm -hmm. Now here's somebody named D in Illinois. Uh, yesterday, D was watching the 700 clips. You heard Terry give a word of knowledge about sinuses. It must have been the day before day yesterday. Before. Mm -hmm. All right, being healed. She claimed the word, and she didn't need her allergy all day yesterday. I, I, I presume that is a healing. Now, we've got some other requests, and then we're going to pray for you. Here is somebody that's got lung cancer and brain cancer. That's serious, but why not? Family salvation and reconciliation. They asked for prayer of the huge cyst on the side of a head. Mm. Ask for prayer. What else? Here's somebody saying, I need healing from skin cancer. Someone else needs healing from drug-resistant bladder infection. Healing from glaucoma. These are just a few of the thousands Terry that have come in. Terry and I are going to join hands. We're going to believe God symbolically. These prayer requests in, beside us here uh, are, are symbolic of 95,000 that have come in. And we're going to join in and we're going to believe God. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the healings that are taking place. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the anointing of the Holy Spirit come into your life. May you know healing. Right now, a lung infection. Oh, I believe it's that, that stuff, uh, cystitosis, it's, it's parrot fever that, that has gotten uh, uh, into your lungs. In the name of Jesus, just breathe and it's going to be healed. Terry. Someone else, you have a a tremendous problem with your lower spine. It's it's like where it sits on the the girdle of your hips, and it's just so painful Thank and you, excruciating. You can hardly move Thank well. You. God is touching and healing that for you right Jesus. now. You're just going to feel that warmth go through that area of your body as it's all set in in um, right position again. There's an Jesus. abdomen. It's like a lot of bruises. I don't know if you've had some kind of medical procedure or somebody beat you up. I don't know what it is, but uh, just put your hand on your abdomen in the name of Jesus. And all that uh, 
soreness is going to go away. You're being healed by the power of God. And Lord, there are people in this audience who need money. There are people who need their children to respect their authority. There are people, oh God, who are praying about their marriages. You have all power. And we pray now in the name of Jesus, my brothers and sisters, right now, be made whole. And Terry, you've got something else. There is someone else. You have a crushed tibia. I don't know how that happened, but it's oh, not healed gosh. well. God is healing that, and that bone is knitting back together stronger than it was oh, before. My. You're going to begin to feel that. It just sounds like a tingling inside your leg. Something in your, in your, in your arch uh, has been, it's fallen, it's been crushed. Right now, those no bones are going to knit together. Your arch is going to be formed as it should be, and all the problem is going to go away right now in the name of Jesus. Just touch your foot in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. And somebody yeah. with glaucoma, yeah. you're, you're just going to mm -hmm. begin to see some light come into those places where Thank darkness you. has been as God heals Jesus. your eye condition for you. Just receive it. Wherever you are, raise your hands and thank the Lord. Just raise your hands and say, Thank you, Jesus. And praise Him. From that, it's yours. I was reading today where the Bible, God made great promises to Abraham, and the Bible says, Abraham amened God. He amened God, and God counted it to him for righteousness. God's looking for you to believe him. So say, thank you, Lord. I take it. I amen God. Terry? Well, if you feel that God isn't answering your prayer, stay tuned. Best-selling author John Bevere says it might be because you've been ensnared by the bait of Satan. He'll explain what that means later on today's show. Coming up later, our chat room is open and we want to hear from you. We'll bring it online with your questions, so don't go away. Hi, I'm Terry Newson. At CBN, we're here to pray for you all year long. But each spring, the entire staff of CBN sets aside a special week of prayer to pray for your needs. We care about you and the things that are happening in your life. No matter how big or small your requests, we want to pray for you. Please call us or mail your prayer request today. It's our privilege to pray for you. Remember when you didn't have to spend a lot to give mom something special on Mother's Day? With Pro Flowers, that's still true. Send mom a gift she'll love. A dozen roses for just $19.99. That's 50% in savings. Order now and mom also gets our elegant glass vase plus your personalized card free. Hurry, supplies are limited. Or double the roses plus this premium pink vase for just $10 more. Take advantage of this amazing TV offer. Go to proflowers.com. Look for the microphone in the upper right corner. Enter CBN in the box and you're ready to send mom roses for Mother's Day. It makes me feel really good knowing that I've made her happy with flowers. Just try to say I love you and I'm thinking about you. But I was really excited so, to get the roses. They were just beautiful. This amazing TV offer is 50% off retail pricing, but only if you go to proflowers.com, look for the microphone in the upper right corner, enter CBN in the box, or call toll-free 1-800-FRESHEST and mention TV. Go online and order now. Welcome to Washington for this CBN News Break. Nevada Congressman Dean Heller will fill the Senate seat left open by the resignation of Republican John Ensign. Ensign decided to step down after, after an inve ethics investigation. Nevada Governor Brian Sandoval appointed Heller to the post, describing him as a fiscal conservative. He said Heller will fight to keep taxes low and balance the federal budget. The Republican says he is deeply humbled by the appointment. Donald Trump is taking credit for President Obama's decision to release his birth certificate. For weeks, Trump's, Trump has been in the headlines, raising doubt over the president's birthplace. On Wednesday, the president finally released his birth certificate, showing he was born in Hawaii. Today, I'm very proud of myself because I've accomplished something that nobody else has been able to accomplish. I am really honored frankly, to have played such a big role in hopefully, hopefully, getting rid of this issue. In a press conference, Obama said the country's problems would not be solved if we continue to be distracted by, quote, sideshows and carnival barkers. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. 
In the next 60 seconds, we want you to qualify to be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. Pick up the phone and get ready to start dialing when the number appears on your screen. Call the number on your screen now and we'll mail you a key. If your key opens the lock in your local direct buy club, you'll be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. Operators are standing by, so call right now. Direct Buy Club is already awarded over a million dollars, and someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? If the phone number is blinking, the phone lines are open. Call now to receive your key and an invitation to your local Direct Buy Club, where members can save thousands or more paying low direct from the source prices on big ticket items like kitchen cabinets, home furnishings, flooring, bathroom fixtures, and so much more. Call now and get your key to winning a $50,000 home makeover. Someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? Have you ever been slighted? Well, don't worry, you're not alone. Everyone's gotten burned at least once in their lives. These offenses are inevitable, and as one author says, they're also holding us back. John Bevere is a best-selling author and founder of Messenger International. For years, he's been helping people overcome obstacles that get in the way of effective prayer. This is the thing we gotta learn. You don't just pray what feels good. You have to pray what is truth. In The Bait of Satan, John identifies one of these dangers and how we can experience personal victories in our lives. John Bevere is the author of The Bait of Satan and also the founder of Messenger International. And John, we welcome you back to the Seven Thanks, Terry. It's so good to be with you. To you, along with my wife, Lisa. Yeah, she's a great friend. Well, I, I like love to her. say I'm Lisa Bevere's <laughs> husband. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> I'm so in love with that girl. <laughs> she's precious. Oh, she is. We want to talk about The Bait of Satan today. What, what does that mean? Most people would, would look at that title and say, hmm? Well, The Bait is being offended. Yeah. Jesus said in Luke 17, verse 1, it's impossible that offenses will not come. Now, in other words, if we breathe air, we're going to have the opportunity yes. to be offended. But what we do with the offense will determine our future. Either we'll become stronger or we'll become yeah. bitter, but we'll never be the same. The actual Greek word that is used there for offense in Luke 17 is an ancient Greek word, scandalon, that was originally used to describe the bait stick of a trap that hunters would use to catch small animals and birds in. The hunter would place the bait on the scandalon, the animal would take it, and the trap would either close and capture or kill the animal. Thereby, an offense is the bait of Satan to pull us believers into his captivity. Now, Paul confirms this in 2 Timothy chapter 2 when he said those who are in opposition with one another, offended with one another, are taken captive of Satan to do Satan's will. Now, the scary thing, Terry, is you can still go to church, still even minister, sing, but you're taken captive of Satan to do Satan's will. So instead of releasing rivers of living water, you're releasing waters tainted with bitterness. They're actually poisoning now. Um, a man who had a vision of the armies that were gonna march against the church in the last days said as in the vision, as the armies got closer, he noticed the demons were not riding on the backs of horses, they were riding on the backs of Christians. Christians who were offended, they were being captive of Satan to fulfill his purposes. So it's a very serious offense. And I've literally seen multitudes and multitudes imp impounded to it. You know, well, all of us, I guess, have known at least one, one body of believers where there's been what's called a church split. And, <laughs> and yet God says that unity is the thing that commands a blessing from him. Who doesn't want that? So what can we do to protect ourselves so that we're not open to being offended easily? I think the thing that we have to do is we have to have in our heart the very firm knowledge that we are created in the image and likeness of God, but we're very different in our giftings, the way we process things, and the way we operate. And so there's gonna be differences. And that's the thing that God expects us to work out because love covers the multitude of sins. And in order not to be offended, the Bible says this, great peace of them who love your word and nothing can offend them. You know, offenses mm -hmm. can wound people. And the way, what happened with me, Terry, was, I'll never forget, I injured my knee. I was, I was climbing a wall and I literally heard a snap in my knee. Ooh, Physical therapist was working on me and he said, do you wanna know why you injured your knee? I said, yeah. He said, because you're out of shape, you don't exercise. Now this was 
This was like 15 years ago. And I remember I got so angry at him, but I thought, he's right. People that are not in shape are more susceptible to injury. Well, Paul made a statement in Acts 24, 16. He said, herein do I exercise to always have a conscience free from offense with God and with men. So Paul said, I've got to exercise. Well, I went from one place to another. Another physical therapist in Indonesia was working on my knee. And he said, do you want to know how to get your knee healed, Mr. Bevere? I said, absolutely. He said, exercise. <laughs> and so I said, Lord, how do I exercise? Because that's what the Lord spoke to me. You know, when a guy blows out his knee, he's got to do physical therapy, which is focused exercise. I said, Lord, how do I exercise? Because I was so wounded by this person. And the Lord said, Matthew 5, 44, where Jesus says, pray for those who abuse you. Mm. Now, isn't it interesting, all through the Gospels, Jesus doesn't say, pray for your mother. He doesn't say, pray for your dad. Now, are we supposed to pray for our mother and dad? Absolutely. But isn't it interesting that the person he tells you to pray for are those who have mistreated or abused you? Mm -hmm. So I began to pray for this person who had deeply, deeply wounded me. And it was very, very difficult. Oh, I'm sure. Because yeah. I didn't want to see him blessed. Yeah. And so I was praying this monotone voice, Lord, bless him. Lord, if you can, bless him. Because God <laughs> told me to pray if for you him, have right? To. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm praying like this for weeks. Yeah. And I'm on a fast. And God speaks to me. And God says, read Psalm 35. And I went to Psalm 35. And David said, hey, fierce witnesses have risen up. They've rewarded me evil for good. And I said, that's me. I did this guy good, and he rewarded me really evil for it, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking David's going to say, break their teeth, bust their jaw, you know, like he does in the <laughs> Psalms. Know. But the next words he says, but as for me, when they were sick, when they were hurt, I prayed for them with oh fasting like yeah. I would my mother or my brother. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, you pray for that man exactly what you want me to do in your life or your family. That changed everything. And I remember getting up from the table, Terry, and I started praying, Father, I pray that he would be as close to you as a man can be close to you. I pray that he would know you as intimately as a man can know you, that you would bless his ministry, that he would mm -hmm. continue to reach more, that you would, that took everything in me to pray that way. Why? Because my soul didn't want to see that. How did it change you? What happened was I started getting excited and more excited and more excited. I was getting healed. Yeah. So just like the guy in the physical therapy machine, my heart was getting healed. And what actually happened was I ended up coming out of this situation very, very close to this man and very in love with this man. And I thought, you know, I said to my wife, I said, when I first met the man, he could do no wrong in my eyes and I loved him for it. Then I saw his faults. His faults were directed at me. I didn't love him anymore. <laughs> and I said, now I still see his faults, but I love him with the intensity as I first met him. That's got to be the love of God because the love of God covers the multitude of sin. And it sets us free to it let does. God love us completely. I, w this is just the tip of the iceberg. You need to read the book. It's called The Bait of Satan. We want the blessing of the Lord. It comes with unity. This book is available in stores nationwide. And for more with John, you can check out our exclusive behind-the-scenes interview with him. That's on our website. Just go to CBN.com and click on the In the Green Room link. Thank you for being with so, us. Great always to so see good you to be with you and Pat. God, God bless, bless you, Terry. You. Pat? Tremendous truth John's got there. Well, still ahead, it's time to bring it online. Your questions from our live chat room are coming up next, so don't go away. My name is Roger Stump, and I'm a cancer survivor. The surgeon said it's inoperable. It's already in your liver. My wife, Brenda, sat there and cried, and I'm thinking, I can't die right now. I'm only 52 years old. I was so distraught. I've heard Cancer Treatment Centers of America had experience with pancreatic cancers. It was like night and day. The hospital just breeds an environment of hope. You'd get a CT scan and the next morning the results were read to you. We'd go up there, I just knew it was going to be a good result. You could just see the joy on Dr. Granick's face. Call now and we'll show you how the most compassionate people anywhere put you at the center of everything we do. Together, we'll explore real treatment options you may not even know exist. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is such a different place because they give you hope. I would strongly urge you to call them and, and get a second opinion. Please call today. Tomorrow. We've been all taught in America that the pilgrims came to America for religious freedom. But that's really a shallow understanding of why they came. Hear the real story of America's first settlers. They were missionaries. They weren't running away from anything. The humble beginnings of a Christian nation. 
Almighty God, by your great mercy, we have reached this land. Tomorrow on The 700 Club. A few years ago, people in southern India fled their village to escape communist rebels. But when they found a new place to live, they ran into something just as deadly, contaminated drinking water. Koshi works hard as a woodcutter to provide for his wife and three children. But one thing he can't give them is fresh drinking water. We get our water from a hole in the ground. It smells very bad and is filled with insects. But it's our only source of water, so we have to use it for cooking and drinking. Five years ago, everyone in Koshi's village fled from their homeland of Chhattisgarh to escape attacks by Maoists, a radical communist group. Koshi and the others settled deep in the forest of southern India. I came here for my children's safety. But this unclean water makes us feel like our lives are in danger. My children are always sick, but this is the only place we can stay. The local pastor kept trying to find ways to get clean drinking water for their village. Then he found out about Operation Blessing's Living Waters team. He asked for their help, and they immediately took action. The team drilled all day and night. By sunrise, Koshi's village had fresh, clean water for the first time. On the day they dedicated the new well, the villagers celebrated with singing and dancing. I don't have enough words to thank you. I am so happy that my children will be healthy because they have good water to drink. You gave my village, my family and me a new life. I will never forget you. Thank you so much. I will never forget you, and I will never forget the time that I was in that village in India, not too far away from uh, where our main headquarters was in uh, uh, India. And uh, they were drinking out of this filthy hole in the ground, and it had green scum on the water. This is where they had to bathe, they had to cook, they had to everything. And uh, there's a big hole. Ugly, green, fetid mess. Just think of it. Yeah. We opened a well. Oh, what a blow. That clean water comes out, and all those women could bring their pots and fill them up with water. You know, many of those people, until those wells are dug, have never had clean water in their yeah, lives. Yeah. I mean, it's astonishing. Well, they have disease. They have yeah. this clean water, no bugs, no, no germs, no parasites, yeah. no amoebas. I mean, my goodness, what you could do! It cost it used to cost a thousand dollars. I think now it's probably up to about eighteen hundred dollars for a well. But in addition to the well, we in a place like that we build a church, so we we say living water. So anyhow, you want to participate? Pick up the phone, call in. We got a lot of people that just do wells and yes, who love to do wells. Mm -hmm. And we work with you know Widow's Might, and they they have they give a lot partnered of money. with us to dig wells around the world. It, it's a it, wonderful yeah. group of Amen. just women, everyday women who said we want to make a difference, okay. and they came together. So so questions. We've got some questions for Let's you. This for is it. Rick, who says my wife and I are separated due to her infidelity. If she asks to reconcile, am I going against my Christian beliefs if I say no? Listen, the Bible says to always be willing to forgive. You know, if Jesus Christ forgave you, how can you not forgive somebody else? Are you going against your Christian beliefs? If your wife says, will you please forgive me? Will you take me home? I sinned. I'm sorry. Now, if she's just playing with you, that's something else. But I mean, assuming that she, I mean, but the Lord said, if, you, if your brother offends you, he said seven times. He said, no, seven times 70. In other words, there's no end to it. Uh, that's what I'm, I'm, I keep coming to God. I say, God, would you please forgive me? I don't want him to say no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know? And you don't want God to say no to you either. Am I going against my Christian beliefs? Yes, you are. What else? This is Teresa who says, I ran across some websites that said my second marriage was not valid in God's eyes because I didn't have a biblically valid reason for a divorce. Am I living in sin? Teresa, I don't know you. I would really rather you go to a godly pastor to give you an answer for that. I don't know what went on in your marriage. I, I really don't. There, 
there's what's called the Pauline privilege, and the Pauline privilege basically is if the unbelieving spouse is pleased to depart, let them depart. Well, uh, there, there is such a thing as constructive desertion, where somebody makes it just hell on earth. You can't live with them, and they have no choice. But I don't know all the things involved. Or if in she this. was a believer at that time and knew what she was doing, she doesn't really say. You know, I mean, all those things. I, I just don't know, so I can't answer your question. But their adultery is the reason. And the Pauline privilege, the unbelieving spouse wants to depart. And I, and I said constructive desertion. But please get counsel from somebody, uh, a, a pastor, and talk to them about that. Because I, I sure don't want to condemn you, because I think God loves you. All mm -hmm. right? This is Cole who asks, I'm 12 years old. Is there an age when you can start believing in the Lord and let Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior? Two, three, four. Twelve? Twelve. <laughs> They used to you have what they call the age of accountability, you know, when you knew the difference between right that's and wrong. That's where confirmation came in, right, for a lot of churches. Well, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. But at 12, you know, mm -hmm. you're supposed to know the difference. But little children, three or four, you know, I've got a granddaughter. She's the sweetest little thing. And she has a little brother. And she led the little brother to the Lord. I think she was five and he was two or three <laughs> or something. And, you know, and he, he's, does he open his heart to the Lord? Yes. Okay. What else? This is Laura who asks, what does the Bible say about being cremated? Is it all right or not? Uh, in the Bible, it was an affront and an insult to have your bones burned. Uh, it, it was something that was considered despicable. Uh, you burned the bones of a king who was evil. You burned the bones of your enemies, that kind of thing. Whereas the honored people were, were, were buried and they had tombs like Abraham and Isaac. They have tombs. I, I just don't think Christians ought to be cremating. I, I, I really don't. Uh, I know it, it, I think most people cheaper. do it because it's become so incredibly expensive to go through the whole process of of burial and yeah, embalming but, yeah, but, and buying the. Yeah, but I mean, this is your mother, this is your father, this is your husband, your wife. I mean, yeah. honor them. Why do you have to burn them up and throw their ashes out? You know, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> my, that might be a little extreme perspective on it. <laughs> my, my, my first cousin, it's true. You know, I prayed with her and, and she died. You know, she died. And so I went up to her funeral and uh, her, her daughter uh, uh, gave me a ride to the cemetery. And she had, you know, beside us a little box. I thought, okay, we're going to the cemetery. And here was this, you know, everything all, it was raining. It was a nice tent set up and everything. People were there, uh, umbrellas. And we were, I was supposed to say a few words. And I kept looking like, where's the casket? And uh, before long, <laughs> the, the, the little box that was in the car next to us was taken and put down a shaft. It's true. Slipped into the ground. That was it. Well, we're all going to dust, right? Well, yes and no. <laughs> she just got there a little faster than some. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Anyhow, honor the dead. Honor them. Is that the time we got? That's the time we've got. You need to say goodbye. I need to say goodbye. I've Thank been, you for your questions. I, I've insulted everybody. You know, I love this program. I can make everybody in the audience mad at me. All right. Please forgive me. All right. Tomorrow, we'll mark the anniversary of one of the most defining moments in American history. We leave you today with these words from Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God. That's all the time we've got. Remember, our telephones are available 24 hours a day. Please call. We'd love to hear from you. And we will see you tomorrow, April the 29th, the first official prayer meeting that launched this new nation.